So there's some renovations at about 2.8 billion that we've identified. And then picking up on your last plan, but also kind of adjusting a bit, we're gonna ask for an auditorium, which would be great to have. And the Department of Education allows a high school to include an auditorium. Uh, family resource, a nurse, health area, custodial receiving, so we added some cost for the like your last plan, what this draft does is say that BOTS, since all the children are coming together in this new K-8, that BOTS could become a new central office. Take a bit of renovation to make that happen, but it's in fairly good uh, condition. Uh, you had a recent renovation. Um, but there are some things that we could do to improve access into the building. Again, about 1.8 million of cost there. I went ahead then and showed replacing your shed with a real bus garage. Okay. And then, just like your last plan, there are some discretionary things. Uh, uh, athletic complex is here. It's a little bit higher than your last plan. The costs have gone up in the last four years. That pretty much matches what you had before. Land acquisition. And then land acquisition for the new facility. And again, these are kind of guesstimates right now. I just sort of took the old numbers that were in the old plan and inflated them a bit. Um, you all may begin to start that process soon on looking for land. Uh, and we hope that those are much less than that. Much <laughs> less than that. Much less than that. So just because you see that number, <laughs> that. Let's not publish that number, no. That's, That's not what we are really to offer. No. Okay. So, folks, this is just to get the conversation started. And then I'm here as your employee. You tell me what you would like me to do. I'll take some notes over here. Uh, if there are changes to this that we can just start working from and finalize it, we are under a bit of a deadline. We've got some timelines to make. We need to get this plan all approved uh, in March and then get it on the state board's agenda by April. So it'll be approved in June. Now there's, uh, maybe Tim talked on this before. The critical thing there is we want to make sure that our needs are on that list when the legislature meets at 18. We don't want to miss out on our seat at the table. So that's why we're trying to help you all move this along. Why I took a stab at doing a quick plan to get the conversation started. So, Tim, would you just go in, and I know you're the architect for Morgan County, and I don't know what you can share and what you can't share, but I know that they had a substantial, I know that some folks may see this money and say, okay, we've only got a $7 million or $8 million uh, bonding capacity, uh, but we're in line for that urgent need money, hopefully, if that comes around, and it's funded by the legislature. Maybe kind of tell where Morgan County was and then what they're actually doing right now. Maybe right. Right. Exactly. Morgan County was in a very similar situation didn't have much bonding capacity at all. Their high school is 60 plus years old now. Um, and so when they did their last plan, um, it showed replacing the high school with their highest need. And I quite agree with that. Uh, their bonding potential was not much. They also then went and did the additional nickel, which again got them to the table. That, as you heard Mr. Tarvin say before, uh, that showed that they had skin in the game, okay? Um, the state then, the legislature then recognized that, put that school on the urgent needs list. Altogether, there's $33 million that came through on about, I don't know, they may have had five million bonding potential. Um, so it's fairly significant what happened there. So they got almost over $25 million out of urgent needs. Correct. Okay. And that's gonna allow them to build a new 105,000 square foot new high school for the children. I, I thought that was important because I thought, you know, I, I, if I was sitting here and didn't know finances, then I could see it's just a layperson sitting here saying, well, the money's not adding up. The money doesn't, right. And, and to do this, really counting on being at the table and showing that you've done your part that you have, and hopefully then the legislature says this is an urgent need. And I think if we bring any of them up here, they're going to agree with us. The combined enrollment for uh, Murphy Elementary and Foster are now 701. How many are in the preschool? 
So that's seven to seven fifty that includes that includes a couple of spring we'll be at thirty. Yeah. <coughs> so we're gonna be at we're gonna be at pretty much capacity. But you gotta remember those figures that you just five. saw a moment ago yeah. that enrollment was fine. They won't let you go much But the good thing about that is that nineteen million that's an estimate. So when we get there it may not cost you as much, especially with the right work which is supposed to reduce costs. And we could also utilize the current box <laughs> if we needed to, if we had to have some elementary or some preschool classrooms there, for if, if we wasn't to be able to come back. Good question. And it's a good question. I will say that initially when I first did this draft plan, I did it for 800, and the state said, hey, we're looking at your demographics. Because those are the numbers that I gave originally. Though. Right. And then they came back to your so numbers are declining. We would try to become that projected decline, right? I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Are we are we taking into consideration future renovations? I mean, we we've kind of thrown things together in the past, so are we? I, mean, I guess it makes sense to look at four plan that could easily renovate and remodel in the future. Yes, yes, it would. Because I've been doing this now for thirty plus years. I try not to box you all in. When we design a new facility, we look at everything from how it can be expanded, how easy it is to renovate the mechanical systems that are easy for you all to operate and maintain. Um, I've got some unfortunate school districts who have very complicated systems for heating and air. They, they can't run them. They can't find anybody to service them. And here they are stuck with a brand new facility and they're not operating the way they should. So we always work to make sure that we can think about how you all are going to own this building for the next 30 plus years. And you also have to remember it looks like about 2024 that bonding number goes down i think from looking at this so that might will give you some opportunities to then come back and paint for now hopefully maybe it will be something different is the projection for the population are any grant would the new school have room for a few more students up to 800 i'm always going to plan for expansion and i'll always show that on my plan so if something changed, if an industry came to the community, those numbers turned around, we would have no problem going back to the department, amending your plan and saying, we now need this facility to serve 800 children. If we had a factory move in here or something like that, it's going to increase your tax revenue, it's going to automatically increase your bond capacity. And I, I don't really understand the, uh, the expansion plan. That facility is not listed here. No, we don't own that facility. That facility owns that building. We provide We provide staff. Okay. With that, we don't we don't provide any maintenance, any type of janitorial custodial services. We just provide three staff. We provide two teachers and one instructional assistant. Okay. Another another good question. <laughs> and that's why this is important. I mean, I, there's questions that need to come out. <coughs> and I guess, and then Tim, I'll let you direct this, but are there things that I basically work with the architect, Gloria and I, and, and some of the folks in the, in the central office. These are things that we felt, as well as, you know, I've spoken with administrators, staff members in the district. So we've tried to have collaborative efforts where I've been able to provide, and also to community members. So if there's things on here that you think that needs to be different, now's the opportunity to, to let us know. But it, it appears from the conversations that I've had with several folks in the community that the elementary is the number one priority in the district. P through A. And then what you could also think about, and I don't mean to steal your thunder, but, but, but if the way I could perceive this is if you build a new elementary school and then you have a demolition of the current building, that could be an opportunity for you to put your discretionary funds in to where you could have your athletic complexes down here for the current location to where you would have your high school and all your high school services located on one now that's just me. I mean, you all are a committee, and I don't have a vote on it. I'm just telling you how I can do it. I mean, I, I don't mean right, but that's just that's the way I can do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
if you're going K through eight, how are you defining middle school and same we, we would hope and what we've had conversations with, with Mr. Murphy is, is that we would like to have two separate entries into the building to where you would kind of have a, maybe a courtyard or something in the middle that would kind of define your school. So that way you would never have grades five through eight would never be converted, would never be in the same uh, parameters as the K-4. You, have, you know, you may, you may have a bus pull in, they would then drop off K-4, bus come on in and drop off five through eight. That way you'd always have, as long as they'd be together, to be on school bus transportation. This is a very simple diagram, but it's, it's very possible, and I've done this in the past, where I might have an entry, this might be admin right in front, this might be our elementary school, this would be our middle school, and all the core things such as library, gym, cafeteria in the middle, those children come to the share, but they never cross paths, which is critical for a first grader meeting an eighth grade. Right? We like to keep those separate. So we'd have two parent drop-offs, we could have bus entry for one side or the other, and those children go their separate ways and only meet. And they really won't meet, that's a scheduling issue. They're only gonna share the gym, the cafeteria, the kitchen, the library, access to the office. And you notice what he said there, and I think the parents and the community would appreciate that. The parent drop-off would be in the front, <laughs> bus drop off would be in the back or vice versa. I think we would really appreciate that, especially if you're down here at around 3 o'clock or in the morning at 7 40 in the morning. It's the same everywhere, I yeah. promise you. So you got a chance to we got a chance to change that. A chance to fix it. Yeah. Of course a lot of it will, will also depend on where we're at uh, as far as the lay of the land. And that's why the location mm -hmm. is important. And we do have some mind, we do have some places in mind that you know those are those are Initial, initial thing. Okay, with the sports complex, is there any way we can add an extension to the high school gym? Put that in there. That'd be a question you could ask. Mm -hmm. The high school gym. It needs to be bigger. It needs to add at least two levels. Oh, okay. Are we trying to add more seats? Water. Yes. Okay. <laughs> If you were here at district oh, ball game, yeah, yeah, I would. yeah, I'd love to. So, how often, other than the district, is it is it full? That is, we um, get more community involvement. That'd be great. Yeah. Typically, and I'm just speaking from typical experiences, and you all may have different perspectives. There's more people in here besides myself. Uh, typically speaking, an addition or adding on to a gymnasium. Typically in that discretionary number five, it would be, and probably going to be one of your last priorities. I mean, you, you would be the KDE standpoint, it is a it's right. discretionary. It's a, so I don't know whether it, it's the point where I'll take it, but I don't know whether it would be. There's been a lot of staff. I don't know whether it would be a main priority. I can clarify that. Somebody brought up that it's used the word soccer up here. Um, that was an oversight that could be here. Well, I guess if the committee as a whole, I'm, I'm just giving you my perspective, if the committee as a whole felt that that needed to be a number three item, I mean, you know, you could like that just with the renovation of the gymnasium. I mean, it's, you could always, it's going to be based on the student population. I mean, it's right. based on the student population and also on the square footage that's in the existing gym. And that's what I was just trying to find there. I think you're gonna meet Department of Ed standards. So anything above that, they're gonna say is discretion. I can tell you from, from the first proposal that we put out that we sent to KDE was we had the gym agent was bigger in the right. elementary school. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing <laughs> they said you're changing. I mean, Tim had that conversation, Mr. Murphy had that conversation with him. That was the first thing that they looked at and said, nope, we can do that. I tried hard. I was a little bit greedy. Oh, uh, really? 
I went with 800. I went with, I had a little science. I had a bigger gym. We actually tried to put the gymnasium bigger at the elementary school than we currently had. <laughs> it can't hurt to try. Well, they, well, they kicked it out. Yeah. You it's like the your, house hunters. You have on your head an auditorium. No, thank you. Make the gymnasium auditorium. The the main, <laughs> our main need to elementary school. Time. The auditorium is listed, Greg, on model 2C. Can you convert the gymnasium to an auditorium and build a bigger gymnasium? <laughs> <laughs> probably in the future. Probably for another facility plan. <coughs>
I used to remember that. So I think we're going to be about 13 uh, for the school, and then another 13 I think roughly. 25 to 30. Yeah. yeah. So can this plan be amended and went how, how soon if you, like if bonding was in April, July 18, the course of architects on board, I mean, you can actually the plan process and then the, uh, the document. Yes. You certainly can, yes. You, we want to try and get you as shovel ready as you can be um, here. And one of the things that um, uh, Tim pointed out earlier is these discretionary projects such as sports, if they're part of another project, they can move up. If you just go out and do them by themselves, then they have to stay in Category 5. That's how we were able to do some of the work that we've done on the, the, with the roofing project. That's how we were able to tie that into the water filtration plan, the box, and the prep sink, and some of the other work that we've done. So again, it is important though that whatever we think we want to do is somewhere on the plane. That's the key. Because that doesn't then necessarily cause the committee to come back together and then the superintendent can go to the state and say, it's on our plan, we want to do these two together. Yeah. I mean, a lot sort of depend on how much you get in needs. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, right. It's going to double your capacity or more. Or more. We just buy more can it. Mm -hmm. So well, what we plan here, we're planning for what we know we can have or what we would expect we could have, but that can change significantly. Hopefully for the better. Exactly. Because, you know, if you sit in bed, and I'd love to have an auditorium sitting on of that new school. That's right. Mm -hmm. and you could be creative. But I mean, you, you could then have that as part about, of your discretionary. Yeah, you about a drama department in with your K-8, you can increase it. If you're using it for class sizes, I mean, you could be creative on how to expand and get a bigger auditorium. Not for auditorium's sake, but depends on how you want to utilize the space. Showing your cool thing. <laughs> I was just going to do that. <laughs> Some of the board may have been able to see this this weekend, but in Morgan County, okay, um, we're actually doing, again, because of the money limitations, we're doing a small stage, okay, and then we're doing some fixed seats that would accommodate about 175 people watching a performance, okay? And then the back of it, and this auditorium has doors, breaks it off. This is next to the cafeteria, which is 3,600 square feet that gets used about two hours a day, okay? So what we've done for Morgan to, to get the most out of that square footage is we have set up what we call reverse fold bleachers. These fold backwards. Now we have a total of 475 seats facing that stage, but it doesn't take up nearly the footprint of 500 uh, seats in an auditorium would normally. So it's a very cost-effective way to get the same result, but use your uh, square footage to get double purpose out of it. Uh, so it's being very efficient uh, with the dollars that are spent, trying to get as much use out of it as possible. So we would talk about it and look at things like that when the time comes to design new school. And that may also open up do we have any school programs that generate much money for the school? Good yeah. enough to provide the actual fund of the program, which you may not be able to. You break even the majority yeah. on most of your courses yes. and so forth. How can we build some type of program to generate some? You can generate funds, but the bonding is where it's where at. But you've got to have a, uh, uh, almost a, you know, a guaranteed uh, source uh, with nickel, for instance, where you bond. We can raise money for our programs. Well, from, from the future for the school itself, too. You could, but you just could. I mean, that's a lot of money without bonding. You can raise $100,000, but you can't use the bond. Because it's not bonding a, it's not a, a brand stream. Before you can 
for the Ralston players and the other companies, it has to be approved. I understand when the decisions which which facilities we include in the school building. I mean, as far as uh, I know, a lot of schools have a football program that generate a lot of income. The football program would generate enough money to actually support itself. And to buy things it needs for. Not as far as the school. Yeah, and that's why we have the building that we have. Yeah, that's why we have the building that we have. Yeah, that's why we have the building that we have. Yeah, that's why we have the building that we have. Yeah, that's why we have the building that we have. Yeah, that's why we have the building that we have. Yeah, that's why we have the building that we have. Yeah, that's why we have the building that Cold uh, safe is on. What's the cold safe? Is it 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 cold safe? Uh, our maintenance or a custodial supervisor is concerned on uh, storage. That is, that's what I see a lot of need for in our district. If I've been there, so there's no one to put in. Mm -hmm. I think it would be great if there were more storage, more places where you know the sink is not right under something else, and poor things so falling in there. Upstairs, we can get. Right. And it's difficult. I cannot show it here. If I call out storage, it's going to get a big X through it. But that doesn't mean that in that 3,000 square foot of allowance where you want to decide, you couldn't dedicate that to you know, teacher work room slash storage in each wing or something like that. We have to get clever about what we call it. But it's an issue everywhere. It's just my hands are a little bit tied on that. I can't show that. That'll all be in here, right? Oh yeah, pitch roof. <laughs> There's nowhere to put it on the plan, but I haven't I'm forgotten. That. Don't come back. I know. Is this a metal in your mind? A single story or? It depends on the site that you all give me. Um, and, and 800 is right on the line where I might consider a two-story. Um, most elementaries that I do, I like to keep to one. It's just difficult to move the kids up and down. Now, I did a 600 student elementary school in Pike County, but I had no choice. I was building on a football field. That was my footprint, okay? <laughs> so it had to be two-story. Um, but it's certainly possible. Uh, I'm comfortable with middle school kids being upstairs we needed to do that. Um, and you have to put an elevator in But I have to put an elevator and two stairs. So the trade-off is I have Bob can weigh in on this. I have less foundation, less roof, but I'm now buying a you know, hundred thousand dollar elevator and a couple of stairs and things like that to go with it. So so it's a number of factors that we kind of weigh Actually, <clears throat> what I was envisioning, you all are the committee, you do whatever, but we, we are required to have a third public forum after a draft is introduced. The draft has been introduced tonight. In my mind, I was thinking you could take this plan home with you and, 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 and read over it. And you've asked great questions tonight. And we would come back and vote and have that form that's required by the department. So we only take one vote then, right? So. One, okay. uh, one, one form, and then we would have on our agenda for the next meeting, uh, you know, vote, vote on the plan. Then from that, plan would go to the board for approval and uh, then we have a public hearing after that. Tim, I've got to send it back to the state you, you first. got to send it back between. 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 between but, yes. but that won't be a problem. Yeah. We can bring it back here in a future date with our blessings. If, if, uh, if everybody's pretty satisfied with the way it's looking tonight with the changes you've made, he can 
he can let them see it this week or next week. Uh, we talked uh, we talked about a date in March to come back and, and possibly vote if the committee's okay with that. And do you remember what that was, Mr. Speaker? I'm looking right now. I believe it was Monday the 13th. Monday the 13th. Well, is two weeks from the day. Two weeks from the day. will give you time. You have to get that. You got to have that. Oh, right. Yeah. I guess the thing I might ask him, just to be clear, if we have sort of a, a, a motion to approve the draft, that would let me send it to KDE tomorrow. When I fix this thing. Okay. But now, what's our next meeting going to be about? Um, <laughs> wouldn't, you wouldn't finalize, um, but I would get KDE's response to this. Okay. And then we can come back with you. Come you back know, with the it. Committee, it. It's okay. It's what yes. you had. Right. Okay. I, I buy that. Is that have fair? to offer another public <laughs> input to? Yes. yes. It would work. It would all work. <coughs> now, when, I would have to have this. So this would have to go to Cecil. To Cecil Lee. No, he's right up there. <laughs> this would have to go to the, that third notice for the meeting. We don't have to have it. Seven, seven days. Seven, seven day days. notice. Then seven we have to have a 14-day notice. For the hearing. For the, for the, for the, the hearing, hearing, which is the hearing. Day. That's the last step. So we'd have to get that. If we're going to meet the 13 in order for Cecil to get the paper. In order When's your board meeting? The that's board meets the sixth day. Well, that's ideal. So that would work perfect. You can right. roll it to the board meeting on the sixteenth. So, see if your deadline for the newspaper for us to get the third LPC would be tomorrow, right? Okay. So we can do it the thirteenth if you all are. Okay. That's, so. that's up to the committee. Okay. Does anyone it, have any glaring issues? I think it's. I agree with her. I, I think that it's a, a good square place to go with. There's nothing. Nothing that I can see that is completely foreign or alien. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not like we're asking for, you know, a 16 bay automotive technology, right. whatever, whatever. It's not here. So, yeah. I'm getting excited. I got to deal with Can we get a call so, yeah, here on the 13th? So, you had a motion here for the draft. Do you want to follow through with that first, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chairman? That's fine. Uh, I need a motion. Would you like to make a motion to approve the amended district facilities plan? I'll the draft. The draft. The draft. Yeah. Facilities plan draft. Lori Sorrel. Move the motion. I'll second by Aaron Brown. Any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor of the saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Let the record show then it was 14 to 0 because I can't vote. So I think we have 50, 14 members. Right, members right. right here. We have one member absent. So. Okay. All right. So I can't vote. It'll be 14 to 0. It's very important. We have a quorum for the next meeting, uh, one over half. So try your best to be here. It won't be a long meeting. Need a motion. Need a motion to meet. No. No, no, not. If everybody's okay with 13, I mean, motion to <laughs> We're going to be 313 530. County High School Band Room at 530. 530 4. We'll do it just like we have done it. Now we can't. We'll do the forum as well, right? Do the forum and then go right into the meeting. We're still 530. We put the forum time at 535. Yeah, that's the way I use it. Aaron will wait for you. Okay, the next item is to actually next meeting topics. Is there anything that we need to discuss on the next meeting? I think we just solved that. Okay. Okay. okay, anything else? Anybody else have anything to address the committee? I would want to stress to you that when you do come back on the 13th, is we'll stay here all night if we need to. Because I want this plan, this is Benefit County's plan. I know that we'll rush tonight because of another commitment. But I want you all to really take a look at this plan and if you have questions in between now and 13, you can give me an email, you can call me on my cell phone, I'll give you my cell phone number. Everybody in the district has it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care if you call, but if you call me after 10 o'clock or before 6 o'clock in the morning, I'll ignore it. So my cell phone is 606-362-8801. And you can call me, whatever, text me, and I will get back with you. And 
I want you to, this is your plan. And we've had some great questions here tonight. Great meeting. And this was a good meeting. I assure you, I've been involved in several LPCs over my career. And I don't know, this has been one of the smoothest LPC processes that I've been through. Especially with the consideration of, of the things that's in this plan. We call you 9.55 at 9. We call you 9.55 <laughs> at 10 o'clock. I'm hanging up. At 10.30. I've got my cell phone that goes off at 10. <laughs> I need to make a motion. I need a motion to adjourn. If anyone's going to the game tonight and you want to sit by me, you can get it in for free if you don't already have a ticket. So if anybody needs an extra ticket, <laughs> All those in favor of 65 say aye. Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. Go ahead. Hey. Yeah, I got in there. It's just not there. Mr. Spencer, does he need any in? Does he need any in the work? Yes. Chairman, hold on just a moment, folks. Let us close our board meeting. Okay, any more communication? Do I have a motion to do I make a motion. Made the motion. Uh, David made the motion. Who seconded it? David seconded All those in favor? Adjourn. All those in favor? Motion carries.